This clip introduces the exponential and the logarithmic function. Now the general class of exponential functions looks like this. A coefficient times a little a, that's the base, to the power of x. Okay, so the x here ex appears in the exponent, which is why it's called the exponen uh, exponential function. Now the little a, this is what we call the base number, and there's a special case when that number takes the particular irrational number 2.718. This is such an important number, it has its own name. And then we call this function a natural exponential. So here f of x equals e to the power of x is the natural exponential function. There could of course be another coefficient in front, okay? It could be like big A times e to the x. But here for this particular case, that very simplest of all cases, that coefficient a is equal to one. So also note the different writing. Sometimes we say e to the power of x. Sometimes we just say exponential x. We, it looks like a function. So we need to be familiar with the properties of the exponential function. Firstly, we should note that the, the value of the function will always be positive. Whatever the argument is, whatever the value of x is, it will always be positive. Now implicitly the domain here is the entire number line, okay, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Particular values are at x equals zero, so e to the zero, we have a value of one. At e to the one, the function takes the value of e, 2.718, so that's about here. We can next think about the value the function takes at the value of x equals negative one, so e to the negative one is the same as one over e to the one and have a, therefore equal to 1 over 2.718 and so forth. And so that's about a third, so that value is around here at x equals negative 1. Of course you could uh, just plug in using your calculator um, more values for x, but you will find if you sketch the graph it will look something like this. So that's e to the x. Now we need to look at a couple of important calculation rules. e to the x times e to the y is equal to e to the x plus y. e to the x over e to the y is e to the x minus y. And e to the x to the y is e to the x times y. Okay, so these rules you just need to know when you're dealing with exponential functions. So let's just look at the graph again. That is the e to the x function, or as in the legend to the graph, we say f of x. What about g of x equals to exponential of negative x? Well, we already looked at one example, e to the negative one. We figured out what uh, we had here. So e to the negative x is equal to one over e to the x. And that means where e to the x takes the value 1, 1 over e to the x will also take the value 1. And when you try a few more values, you will find that this function is just the mirror image of e to the x mirrored at the vertical axis. And that is g to the x, which is the exponential of negative x. So, there's another function that's very important, and that's the logarithm function. It turns out the logarithm function is the inverse function of the natural exponential function. So the natural logarithm is the inverse of the natural exponential function. So what does that mean, the inverse? What does it mean algebraically? So let's uh, use a little example here. Just imagine you have the following equation. e to the x is equal to 5. Now if you take the logarithm, then you're so to say liberating that x from the exponential function. You get x on the left hand side and log of 5 on the right hand side. Vice versa, if you're starting out with an equation, 
Uh, that looks as follows. So we're starting out with an equation log of x equals to 5. Then you're sort of liberating that x from the log function by applying the exponential function to both sides of the equation. So you end up with x equals the exponential of 5. So in that sense, these are inverse functions. You're sort of undoing an exponential with a log and you're undoing a log with an exponential. What's also important to understand about both the exponential and the logarithmic function is that both of them are one-to-one -one mappings. Now, what do we mean here? We said earlier, any function can only have one value of y for any value of x. But that's not the same as a one-to-one -one mapping. What a one-to-one -one mapping says is that for any y value, there can only be one x value that produces that y value. So a counter example of that is, for instance, a quadratic function. The value 4 in a quadratic function can be produced by x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2. So a quadratic function would not be a one-to-one -one mapping, but exponential and log functions are such one-to-one -one mappings. So Clearly, these two functions are very much related to it. And as we said above, we move from one to the other by either taking the log or the exponential. So that is what we mean. These are inverse functions of each other. Now, in general, how do we actually get inverse functions? There is a general rule, and that is here on this slide, to get an inverse function, what you need to do is you take your original function, whichever that is, you exchange the y and the x values, and then you solve the equation for y. And what you then end up with is the inverse function of the original function. So that was just a, a more general point. Uh, but we applied this technique basically here to uh, the exponential and the natural log functions. Let us plot the exponential function first again. So that is just exactly the same function which we already saw on the previous uh, slide. So here it is. And then let's plot the uh, logarithmic function a natural log function and uh, that looks as follows it has the same shape as the exponential function but it's located at a different place in the coordinate system it looks like this so it starts out from negative infinity and then moves up into the positive quadrant turns out it's a mirror image of the exponential function around this diagonal. That is the y equals x diagonal. A couple of important points here. As you can see from this graph, the exponential function, regardless of the value of the input x, regardless of the value of the argument x, the value of the function itself is always positive. Okay, so that blue line, the exponential function, only has positive outcomes, even for very, very negative x inputs. So that's very, very important to understand, always positive. The logarithmic function, however, has negative outcomes for x values smaller than 1 and positive outcomes for x values larger than 1. And it is actually only defined for positive values of the argument x. Yeah, so that is very important to understand. We need to look at a few more properties of the logarithmic function. So let us first uh, replicate the uh, plot of the logarithmic function here again. So this is what it looks like. It has negative values for values smaller than 1 positive values for values larger than 1, 
and it's only defined for values of x larger than zero. Okay, so that's the domain of the logarithmic function. Sometimes call that all um, real numbers plus only the positive ones. Okay, for the value of zero itself, it is not defined. So what about the range of the logarithmic function? You can see it sort of dives down to very, very negative values. The closer we get to zero, but not quite zero. So it goes in this direction here, goes to negative infinity. Now to the right hand side, it turns out, that's not immediately obvious from the graph, that it goes to plus infinity. But you can perhaps already see it goes to plus infinity very, very slowly because the slope will get flatter and flatter. But if you just walk long enough, you'll get to infinity. Not quite sure when you know you arrived, but there you go. So the log of the exponential function to the power of x is just x. That was what we had on the previous slide already. It basically embodies the definition of the exponential function and the log function being the inverse functions of each other. And that next line is just the reverse expression of the same fact. So a few more calculation rules. The log of a product is the same as the log of the sum of the two individual arguments. A log of a quotient is the same as the difference of the two logs. If you have the log of x to the power of p, you can bring that p in front of the log function. So that's the same as p times ln x. So an example of that would be the log of x squared. It's the same as 2 times the log of x, but only the positive values of x. It's important. So we couldn't have negative 2 here because we're only having um, the domain of our log function is only on the positive line. And then uh, just a couple of specific values. The log at the value of x equals 1 is 0. So that's why the basically the root of this equation is at x equals 1. And the log of e, remember e is an irrational number 2.718 and so forth is equal to 1. So that's that green point here. I could have drawn it uh, a little neater. So these are the important characteristics of the logarithmic function. And uh, we will assume that you have them at your fingertips all the time.